Where the spirit 
one born, a place at the table for everyone born, clean water and bread, a shelter, a space, a safe place for growing for everyone born, a star overhead. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For woman and man, a place at the table, revising the roles, deciding the share, with wisdom and grace, dividing the power. For woman and man, a system that's fair. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For young and for old, a place at the table, a voice to be heard, a part in the song. The hands of a child in hands that are wrinkled. For young and for old, the right to belong. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For just and unjust, a place at the table, abuser abused with a need to forgive, in anger and hurt, a mindset of mercy for just and unjust, a new way to live. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice justice and joy for everyone born a place at the table to live without fear and simply to be to work to speak out to witness and worship for everyone born the right to be free and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. For gay and for straight, a place at the table, a covenant shared, a welcoming place, a rainbow of race and gender and color, a gay and for straight, the chalice of grace. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy.
And so, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resurrection Beach MCC. As you can see, I'm sporting my as close to yellow as I could get. <laughs> and so, we have several folks here with us tonight that are wearing yellow and uh, blue plaid flannel shirt. Uh, yellow and blue over here. <laughs> Harry's got on yellow and blue. So we are strong in our support for Ukraine. And so a huge thank you to uh, Meg and Chris who made the sunflower prayer prayer pens for the rally this afternoon. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and we're going to open our service tonight with uh, we bring the sacrifice of praise. Mm -hmm. That was almost a Kresge moment, but not quite. So <laughs> please join with the uh, damp, dynamic duo of Harry and Marilyn as they lead us in We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise. service right now with our opening prayer and then we'll be going into women's history and then the rest of the announcements so holy god we thank you first of all for the beautiful day that you gave us today for the spirit of uh, togetherness that you are creating throughout the world to stand against the powers that be in russia and as we prayed before, Holy God, we asked for you to send a great wind. And we know that you are doing that because of the things that we have seen that are going on. And so we just pray, dear God, that you would continue to strengthen us, fortify us, and continue to guide us and lead us in the call that you have placed on this denomination and on this body of believers as we seek justice for all. In these things we pray. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I believe, yes, Women's History Month, uh, the unsung heroes of daily life. You know, we had, I think there was almost 20 suggestions for women to highlight. And so I ended up settling on five. Two of them are very short, so they'll be in one week. But there's a mathematician, uh, there's a scientist, there's entertainer, there's a social reformer slash uh, let's be good to people. And then there's one other one. I almost went for the queen of the lesbians of Paris, but I couldn't quite fit it in because her biography was like this. <laughs> and I was like, how do you shorten that? There was no way. But so this week, we are going to be looking at <coughs> Madame Mur Marie Curie. Yeah. So Madame Marie Curie, I cannot pronounce her last maiden name, was born in Warsaw, Poland on November 7th, 1867. Mm. The daughter of a secondary school teacher, she received a general education in local schools and some scientific training from her father. She became involved in a student's revolutionary organization and found it prudent to leave Warsaw. Imagine that. 
which was then a part of the Poland that was dominated by Russia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Yep. And so she left and went to Krakow, which at that time was under Austrian rule. In 1891, she went to Paris to continue her studies at the Sorbonne, where she obtained a licenciate ships, I can't even pronounce it, L-I-C-E-N-C-I-A-T-E -E -E, ships, whatever that is, yeah. in okay. physics, and the mathematical sciences. She met Pierre Curé, professor in the School of Physics in 1894, and in the following year, they were married. She succeeded her husband as head of the physics laboratory at the Sorbonne, gained her doctor of science degree in 1903, and following the tragic death of her husband, Pierre, in 1906, she took his place as professor of general physics in the faculty of sciences, the first time a woman had held this position. She was also appointed director of the Curie Laboratory in the Radium Institute of the University of Paris, which was founded in 1914. Her early researches together with her husband were often performed under very difficult conditions. Laboratory arrangements were poor and both had to undertake much teaching to earn a livelihood. The discovery of radioactivity by Henry uh, Vescorel in 1896 inspired the Curies in their brilliant researches and analysis, which led to the isolation of polonium, named after the country of Marie's birth, <coughs> and radium. Madame Curie developed methods for the separation of radium from radioactive residues in sufficient quantities to allow for its characterization and the careful study of its properties, therapeutic properties in particular. Madame Curie throughout her life actively promoted the use of radium to alleviate suffering. And during World War I, assisted by her daughter, Irene, she personally devoted herself to this remedial work. She retained her enthusiasm for science throughout her life and did much to establish a radioactivity laboratory in her native city. In 1929, President Hoover of the United States presented her with a gift of $50,000 donated by American Friends of Science to purchase radium for use in the laboratory in Warsaw. Madame Curie, quiet, dignified, and unassuming, was held in high esteem and admiration by scientists throughout the world. She was a member of the Council de Physique Solvay from 1911 until her death. And since 1922, she had been a member of the Committee of Intellectual Cooperation of the League of Nations. Her work is recorded in numerous papers in scientific journals, and she is also a known author. Um, and then uh, it goes on to uh, talk about the Nobel Peace Prize that she and her husband shared with uh, Bussarelli in 1911. <laughs> and that they were later named, received the Davy Medal of the Royal Society in 1903 and in 1921. President Harding of the United States on behalf of the women of America presented her with one gram of radium in recognition of her service to science. She died in Savoy, France after a short illness on July 4th, 1934. And so during those times, people didn't know about the, you know, the life damage from being exposed to radium. She and her husband both died from that because of their work. So they gave their life literally for the study of science and to help others. But you know, I, I keep going back to 1867. <coughs> it's amazing to me. I mean, you know, we live in a world today where, uh, and as Chris shared when we we're at the rally today, my smartphone has more memory in it than the Apollo 13 spaceship. <laughs> and my very first computer had 40 meg hard drive and four meg of RAM. Can you believe that? And the company that my father worked for when they got their very first computer, it was $1,000 per meg of RAM. And how things have changed, you know? Yeah. So just 1867, the things that this woman accomplished, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I shared this morning, by the time we get done with Women's History Month this month, it's going to be a reminder, <clears throat> and especially even right now. Just imagine what shape this world would be in today if it were not for the accomplishments of women 
from the past. There is so much that women have done. And, you know, and every year when we go to Women's History Month, I'm reminded specifically of the age crisis when it was women who picked up the helm, who went, became the, the pastors, who went to the hospitals, who took care of the people, who made sure that they had a final communion, that they knew that they were loved, and that they were a child of God. That alone says it all. And this other is on top of that. <clears throat> so I look forward to sharing with you the rest of the, uh, the women's history as we go through the month of March. And so I think that now brings us to some of our announcements. Um, I don't know what we've got. I don't remember. Oh, yes. I still love that flashing announcement sign. And so let me see. Yes. So coming up on Monday, Thursday, at Good Samaritan MCC, we'll be having our traditional Monday, Thursday communion, foot washing, uh, following Jesus to the cross. And that will take place on Good Friday. Um, so it'll be both events wrapped into one. And so then we'll follow Jesus to the cross and we'll have the opportunity of nailing our names to the cross with Jesus. And coming up on Easter Sunday, um, we will be receiving a special social justice offering uh, to go to the denomination. And I don't know if uh, I had a chance to share this or not, but um, we had an opportunity to send some funds to the denomination and to an organization called Access, which uh, is there to help LGBT Ukrainians get out of the country if they so desire. And so last week, I think it was just this past week, uh, we were able to send uh, the tie-dye pigs funds and a few bucks from the general fund to be able to send $200 to help. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more a little bit later about some more money that's going to be going there this week. So uh, that's coming up. And of course, we have the Youth Crisis Center for the special Easter. Let's see, so far we have the ladder toss. Uh, we do have some soccer balls or volleyballs. Okay, we have, we have three basketballs here. Uh, we've got the, the cornhole game. Do we have a football? We have a football. Yeah. Okay. One football. And, and you know, uh, as I was told, you know, uh, the balls have a tendency to go over the fence into, I think it's the library property. And they're not allowed to leave the property, so they can't go get the balls. So they go through a lot of them. So just because we have three basketballs now, or we have a couple of soccer balls and a couple of volleyballs, there's always a need for more. And I'm assuming that they have an air pump or an air compressor. I need to find that out. And if not, we'll pick up one to deliver to them. So uh, we have that coming up. And then so for our birthdays, let's see. Today's the sixth, right? Yeah. So coming up on the ninth, Dominic has a birthday. And then on the 13th, Tony has a birthday. And I have a birthday. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Last Tuesday, I completed my Medicare uh, Advantage sign up. <laughs> so, yes. Um, and then coming up on the 20th, which will be uh, the following Sunday, Bobby has a birthday. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Don't worry, you're not anywhere near as old as I am. So you're good. So that's what we have coming up this week. So on three, let's just shout out a happy birthday to everybody, shall we? One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. All right. And what's next? Oh, yes. So we closed out the month of February at $2,901.14. So thank you guys so much. Uh, that's a huge difference from where we were on the 13th. So uh, there was a, a very nice rally that came through. And so this is how you can make a donation if you would like to. Uh, you can zell us. I love how that sounds. Oh, just zell us at 714-662-6972. Or you can go to our website, rbmcc.org and click on that lovely little yellow donate button. And that'll take you out to PayPal, a secure website. And, or you can write us a check and drop it in the mail to us at Resurrection Beach MCC, 11037 <laughs> Warner Avenue, number 130 in Fountain Valley, 92708. And of course, you know, because we've, uh, the tie-dye pig has 
given the funds to go to uh, the, the Ukraine to help folks there. Uh, we would gladly receive any coinage or any green stuff that you might want to drop into the pig. Oh yes, this, this pig has not eaten, you know? As you can see, this pig is starving to death, right? Almost, yeah. There's a little bit here. Um, and so, uh, oh, yeah. well, bless you, dear. Oh, he's going to get some greenery. He's going to not know what to do with all this. Hope he don't fart. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he does, he might just look the other way. <laughs> and so, um, I would like to be able to here share with you all. Um, at the rally today, uh, Meg and Chris had gone out uh, yesterday and had purchased all these supplies. Uh, they bought uh, artificial sunflowers and they they cut them off from the stems and they took pens and they wrapped them all together with uh, blue painter's tape and yellow painter's tape. And they uh, brought them to the rally today and uh, they were receiving donations for anybody that wanted one. They were giving them away as free as well. And so um, we have $137 now that's gonna be going for Ukrainian relief. That will be going somewhere. Well, it'll be going out through MCC and the, the access this week. And so it was just a wonderful opportunity. And so we have so many opportunities to be able to serve our brothers and sisters, whether that's here at home or across the ocean. And, you know, we often take for granted, don't we, the, uh, the privileges that we've had. And even though sometimes it seems like we don't have all that we should have, we have a lot more than the folks in the Ukraine have right now. We have safety. We have the ability to get out of the country if we want. They can't even do that. I was talking to Reverend Sean at the, uh, from the UU church earlier during the rally, and she shared that she had seen from someone, uh, a young L uh, a young LGBT man, no, a young gay man in the Ukraine who was an animator. And because he was over a certain age, he was not allowed to leave because he might have to serve in the military. Mm -hmm. And he was like, uh, I can't even do exactly what Reverend Sean did, but it was something like, oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly that is not his forte. So, but we just need to continue to be in prayer and to do whatever we can do to help our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. And, you know, I saw on Facebook, um, so far in, in a two-day period, 61,000 rooms have been booked through Airbnb yeah. uh, for in excess of $2 million, which is direct aid coming from people so that those people will have funds to be able to do what they need to do. And I'll be sharing more about um, all of those things that went on during the service. But now I will shut up so that Harry and Marilyn can uh, serenade us and we can join in with them as we receive the offering. Sorry, the right side <laughs> it's not about them. <laughs>
on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise never be on my lips, never be on my Thank you.
Give it up double for the second take. And we're going to move forward past the scripture and we'll just go to the service image that's up there for a couple of minutes. Um, because as you can see, we have a diverse group of people and we have call on the name of the Lord and a rainbow. So we're not going to use the scriptures that were planned or recorded. Instead, we're going to use the, um, another scripture that was in the lectionary for this week, and from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. And so in that passage, it is God telling God's people that they need to give of their first fruits, to give of the first and the very best that they had, that they were to bring it into the temple, that they were to place it before the altar. And then they were to bow down before God and ask God to bless that bounty. And in verse 11, it says, and you shall celebrate with the Levites and the alien among you. And so for many of us, when we think of the alien, we think it of someone from another country, don't we? Even in our government today, any immigrant uh, legal or documented or undocumented, well, the undocumented ones don't have an A number. The documented ones have an A, an A number, which stands for alien number. And that is how the government knows who they are. But I say to us that the alien among us is not just the people from another country. The alien among us is the person that we don't know. Whether it's uh, that a, a transgender person who comes into service because we don't know what they go through. We don't know the struggles that they face as they come to terms with being transgendered. We don't know what any one person is going through. We make assumptions about what they're going through, what their needs are, uh, what we can do to help, you know, uh, when we're providing things for the, the youth center, I think I need to put these on. We need some, we need some fun here tonight. So for those of you who are joining us remotely, these are the rainbow rabbit ears that go with the sports equipment when, I, when it gets delivered on Easter, well, just before Easter. But we make assumptions about what we believe they need. They told us a little bit, but we make assumptions. And, you know, as I was preparing to leave to go to the, uh, the morning service this morning, and uh, it was a Michael Jackson song that came on the radio, and I think it was Thriller, but don't quote me. <laughs> because, you know, I don't know what most of them are. Anyways, there was a line in that song that said, the alien inside. And so how many times do we truly not know ourselves? You know, perhaps we live in a world of uh, delusion because we live as if we're one way, but maybe deep inside we're not. Maybe deep inside we're a different person. We haven't embraced that. We don't even accept it. We don't know it's there. So if we don't know our own inside, how can we expect others to know us? And so, you know, with this week of everything that's been going on in the Ukraine, I believe that that scripture, that one single verse says it all, that we are to celebrate the bounty of the Lord with the Levites, but more importantly, I believe with the alien among us. And you know, uh, as I shared at the morning service, you know, normally four or five hours and my, my sermon is pretty much taken care of. <laughs> Yesterday, 12 hours, because I kept stopping so I could scroll through Facebook and see what was going on. <laughs> and you know, um, so there's so many things that have happened in the past few days. There was a school of 500 kids and their music teacher taught them, I believe it was 
uh, the national anthem to uh, Ukraine. And so what they did is they went out into their athletic field and they drew a huge peace sign. And those 500 students all lined up on that line. And so they made a human peace sign. And clearly they had a drone way up there because they took a photo of that or a video of it and they sang that song. Um, there was a, a cast at the Metropolitan Opera Center in New York City. Their lead cast member was from the Ukraine. So before the program started, they all came out on stage and they sang that song. This morning on Facebook, there's a video of a very young, he looked like he was maybe 18 at, at Pops, Ukrainian soldier and sitting on his shoulder, actually right on the collar of his coat was a little yellow breasted bird. And I couldn't tell whether it was yellow and black or yellow and like navy blue, but it was there. And then I saw an image of an elderly Russian woman on mass transit, sitting there just quiet as anything, wearing her canary yellow jacket and under that a blue hooded sweatshirt. And the caption of course was, sometimes you don't need to be loud. And you know, and I'm reminded, um, there was a woman and her children and some of those children were age 11. They were holding signs and flowers in a park in somewhere in Russia. And the police came along and they were arrested. And they were not put into a detention center, they were put in jail. But the outcry was so strong that the authorities had to release them. But they were told, don't ever do that again. How sad is that? And then yesterday, there was a video of a young Russian soldier. They thought they were on a training maneuver. They didn't even know that they were invading the Ukraine. He got captured. And here he is in the center of town, a cup of tea in one hand, a scone or a biscuit or something in the other, and a woman standing in front of him holding a phone so that he could call his mother in Russia and let her know that he was alive. And you know, he had tears running down his face, whether that was because he was just overwhelmed at the outpouring or whether he was overwhelmed because he had no idea what was going on. He's now a prisoner of war. And we know that historically prisoners of war have not been treated well. But here is this story. And you know, and there are so many others, the dock workers in the UK who refused to unload a uh, tanker from Russia with petroleum on it. They refused, it had to leave, it's gone back. And I understand from uh, Robert at Good Sam this morning that Long Beach did the same thing. They're refusing to unload any cargo ship from Russia or that has anything from Russia on it. Okay. And so, and then, you know, re recall that a couple of weeks ago, we prayed for, a, for God to send a great wind to push Putin back. Well, guess what happened late yesterday, early this morning? Israel issued sanctions against Russia. Well, then Switzerland joined in, which is new, very neutral. And, and I, I believe it was Saudi Arabia and Lebanon, I think. Anyways, it was two countries who have never agreed on anything. They came together and they agreed to sanction Russia. So God is working and God is sending a great wind and he is changing people's hearts and changing people's minds. And so, you know, when we were out at that rally today and the, the sheer number of cars that went by and honked and some of them came by three and four times and they were taking video and they were taking pictures. And it was just so touching to see the outpour. And there was one woman there uh, who's half Russian and half Ukrainian. <coughs> she has family there. And she was so thankful for the support that she received and that her family is receiving. 
And you know, this morning on Facebook, Reverend Roy Hudson posted a thing that says, so if you're going to church this morning and you're going to complain because the coffee is lukewarm and the music isn't what it should be, and the, the message is this and the message is that and da 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 you need to think about this. There are Christians in the Ukraine who are meeting in subways right now because of the bombs. Guess what? They have no coffee. They have no musicians. They don't even have somebody to lead them to give them a message. But they've gathered together as a community of faith with aliens, aliens among them. And so we have the very same opportunity. The alien among us is not just someone from another country. It's anyone that we have not gotten to know yet. And as we journey through Lent into Good Friday, through the celebration of Easter and into all of our tomorrows, I just hope and pray that during this season of Lent that we would open our hearts and our minds and our ears even more than we already have because it's always a need for more understanding because we can't truly be all that God has called us to be if we don't understand the people and the needs that God is calling us to serve. And so that is the message for this week that we love and that we serve the alien among us and that we get to know them even deeper. God bless you and thank you. And so now I'm gonna call on Harry and Michael again. I know you only had a five minute break. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> the dynamic duo of Harry and Marilyn, and they're going to lead us in singing Made Me Glad, and then Frida will be coming up for, uh, to lead us in family prayer, and I will be telling a couple of them to Frida while they're singing.
<laughs> well, as we come to the time of uh, family prayer tonight, I think that we need to include all of the Ukrainian people in our family and think of them as our family and pray for them. Uh, Peggy has macular degeneration and she has a doctor's appointment and is hoping for better news. Yes. And Aaron, who we have been praying for and have had a few requests this week, uh, is having lots and lots of tests to see if they can figure out exactly what's going on and to help with what they do know about. I, I have good news that Diana Spidell is home oh, good. and resting. Uh, they've saw, they've figured out the blood pressure issue, but I'm not sure they've figured out her digestive issues, mm -hmm. but they're working on it. So that's good. Now let's see who else. Oh, darn. There was a lot of them. Yeah, I know. Oh, and there was one on Facebook, someone uh, whose family, whose parents are in Ukraine. I don't remember who it is. I saw it quickly uh, and they've Michael taken it Uliberry. down. Oh, Michael Uliberry. Okay. That's Chris. Oh. Yeah, that's Chris Uliberry. He's using his brother's phone. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Aaron. Uh, prayer request for Frank Dinez. Um, he used to be a member here and he's still keeps contact. Um, he's having kidneys uh, issues because of the medicine he's in for, he's using for other issues. So we need to keep him in prayer for that. And let's see, oh, Jan Hinman, Hinman has found out that her friend Mike is in the ER with blood pressure and kidney issues. And Aaron, Diana, looks like that's, oh, and we're, we're still hoping that um, Delina will find housing. Uh, we've been praying for that for a few weeks now. Okay, does anyone here have a prayer request? Um, or a praise? I do have a praise. Robert had his uh, skin cancer surgery yes. on Friday, and they got it all. Wonderful. So he doesn't have to have any more. He did have to make a flying trip back because he started bleeding. Mm. And so they had to put more stitches in. Um, but other than that, he's good. Good, right. good. Anyone else? Bobby. I had a giant kidney stone about the size of this on the front of the thing. Ooh. Uh, he's 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 going to the hospital now, and he had surgery and everything like that to get it out of there. So he's doing better. This isn't the this isn't the first one he's had. So hopefully they don't get like worse as he gets older. But yeah. that was severe. So. Yeah. And since he's in recovery, so he can't have any kind of pain medicines. Uh, oh. So it's like well, or it's not narcotic stuff. So it's yeah. really really hard for him to go through. Wow. Yeah, and that's really painful. painful. Yeah. Okay, what was his name? Or Rob. Rob. Anyone else? Silent request? Okay, let's go to God. Loving God, we come before you tonight and we ask you to intervene in the situation in Ukraine. Bring justice <coughs> and peace to that country. And Lord, I ask that you would be with all of the people that we've talked about tonight. Jan Hinman's friend with the kidney issues, Frank with kidney issues, Diana Spidel with kidney, uh, well, not kidney issues, but blood pressure and digestive issues. Rob with a kidney stone that was very painful to pass. And um, uh, just all of the people that we've talked about tonight. We praise you that Robert's surgery was successful and that he's recovering nicely. And I just ask that you would touch each person who has raised their hand in silent supplication. You know their needs, you know what's best, and we leave those in your hands. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 And so, and it's not Michael and Harry, it's Marilyn and Harry are going to uh, lead us into our time of communion. 
I think I'm just going to refer to you as the dynamic duo. Oh. That I don't mess up. D and D. communion I don't know if you can see it or not but this is a sign that Meg had made for the rally today <coughs> and so she even went so far as to make the A out of praying hands oh. so um, she was quite detailed in this um, she had planned she said to make more but this one took her about two hours she said. Wow. well because you know everything had to be measured out <laughs> and when she was telling me how she had done this I'm thinking to myself yeah, that's probably exactly what I would have done, too. <laughs> you know, actually, I would have probably just created it on the computer and hit print and then taped them together and away we go. But praying hand, how beautiful. Yes. And she's even got the thumb and the little wrinkles in it. So she went all out. So, yes, we've come to the time in our service when we are invited to come to Christ's table. This is not... Resurrection Beach MCC's table, it is not any church's table. It is Christ's table. And Christ invites us to come to receive, to come just as we are. And so as part of our consecration, I just invite us to join together in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so at each communion, as we gather together, we remember the events that took place in that upper room that night when Jesus was there with his disciples, his followers, his family of choice. <laughs> and regardless of what the painting shows of there being just men there, we know there was much more. There was men, women, and children who were present. And so at the end of the meal, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. And he said to those gathered, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you eat of this, remember me. He passed it among them and they consumed it. And likewise, after they had consumed the bread, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a cup of wine. We believe it to be the cup of Elijah that was put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it. And then he breathed into it with the very same breath that God had breathed into him. And he said, this cup represents the new covenant that I make with you today. Whenever you receive of this cup, remember the covenant and all that I have taught you. He passed it among them and they consumed it. Let us pray. Holy God, I just pray that as we go forward from this service right now, that you would continue to send your holy anointing spirit to fall afresh on us, that it would continue to lead us to the people that you would have us to know better, the alien among us and ourselves. And I just pray, dear God, that you would continue to give us the guidance, the direction, that each of us need and seek so that we can be truly what you have called us to be, disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. In these things we pray, amen. And so that brings us to our closing song, which I know you are gonna love because it is, I have decided to follow Jesus. And this is not gonna be a slow one. So this is gonna be lively. So I just want you to rise as you are able, clap if you know how, and if you have rhythm, some of us do, some of us don't. So with that, I have decided to follow Jesus.
feel the spirit. <laughs> yeah, that keyboard was just a bouncing up and down. And that's the way it should be, folks. So, thank you. So as we prepare to bid you all a fond adieu tonight, I just want to, first of all, thank you all for all the love and the support that you're showing to the people of Ukraine in whatever way you're doing that. Whether you're booking an Airbnb so that they have direct funds or you're standing on a street corner waving a sunflower, whatever you're doing to show your support, thank you so much. And so let us just, first of all, then give thanks to God for the food that we're going to receive this week and ask for prayers for each person that's gonna have anything to do with that food, especially for the farm workers, transportation workers, processing plant workers, and for the home cooks, because we know that without them, we would not have some good eats because it's all cooked with love and love makes the world go around. And so I just pray, holy God, that you would send your holy anointing touch to fall afresh on each one of those people. And I pray also, dear God, that you would bless the food so that it would nourish our body so that we can go and do and be all that you have called us to be, disciples of Christ. Amen. Amen. So now, as you go forward from this place, with each new person that you meet, may God open your heart, your mind, your eyes, and your ears to see the beauty that is in them and to come to know them a little bit better so that the alien among us is no longer an alien, but a good friend. God bless you. And I'll bid you all a fond adieu. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, the white one, the white one. Might have a snake. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a short offering, so. Praise God from the Lord.